Hello and welcome back to Creeper World 3. I had so much fun playing this a couple of days ago when I did kind of an overview of the game. I decided I'd come back and actually play a mission instead of talk about it. Now the mission that I've selected is this one, Otrav, which is a little ways through the story. But it seems to just have the right amount of challenge and uniqueness to it. So because I've already done it, it's no longer going to give me the little story prompt, so nothing is spoiled. However, at this mission there's quite a lot going on. There's a ton of emitters everywhere, as well as these two circles. Now these two circles are problematic because they travel between each of these blue circles. And they basically pick up any creeper that is in them and then deposit them at a different one. So as the creeper begins to fill up on these back ones, then it's going to pick up a creeper and put them over toward these forward ones, which is going to pose a problem for me as my base is going to be over on this very left ridge, which I'm actually going to set up now. And I'm going to start with collectors, simply because I want the collectors in a very specific spot right there. And the reason I want them in this linear spot is so that I can put uh, reactors behind them that will give me a much better chance of generating a lot of power since there's not a lot of space and I'm gonna need to defend in this ridge for a little bit so I'm actually going to stick down all th not all three I probably don't need to put down all three just two should be fine actually so I'm gonna put down two and since they're all gonna be connected to the same power network these bases that I have the command centers they don't really do anything other than just act as a a packet dispenser I should say so their only real purpose is that any towers up here are gonna get packets from this one any towers down there are gonna get packets from the bottom one and of course I'm gonna build a siphon over this energy node so that after a little bit of time I will start to collect the energy from it and now it's all about waiting for stuff to build at least a little bit to the point where I can start placing weapons down I'll just stick some there and put a collector there as well as one can go right there and I'm gonna need more cannons so I'm just setting this up as knowing what's going to be a problem later on so now that those are all put down, I am going to grab myself some reactors and start with this process. So while I have energy in this energy siphon, right there, reactors shouldn't be too difficult to build. And hopefully that will remain the case. So I'm actually going to try something rather risky, but it'll have a very high reward if it ends up working and that is taking in a very aggressive stance rather early because if I can capture at least one of these then I will get a huge advantage without needing to really turtle for a long time to generate a lot of more power so let's just speed things up for a moment while I wait for some stuff to build now the goal is to get a nullifier within range of that so up here is the goal in order for this to happen, I actually need to wait for the creeper to destroy this little makeshift wall, this thing. The creeper needs to break that before I can do what I'm going to try and do. So more reactors, just to keep that flowing. And at this point I'm actually going to build a couple of strafers. I'll just start with three, I can build more. Okay, now this is a new thing that I didn't show last time, and that's called a shield. And the shield is very useful because it creates, as it would imply, a shield. Now I'm going to move that there. And I really want to move the shield forward, but I actually can't right now. Because if I did, then um, the turrets would basically get destroyed. Okay, when these are done, I need them to start attacking that. And this is the real problem. Now I'm at the point where I'm basically out of energy. 
and I'm simply just not generating enough. So this is that really slow turtling that I was talking about and I might actually end up just losing this because I don't have that energy that I need. Now one of the redundant parts about this game that kind of hurts you is even when you're out of energy and you're not having a positive output of energy, you still need to build more energy. As you can see, I'm building more reactors and I need to keep building more energy so eventually I'll have enough reactors that I have a positive energy outcome. And once I have a net positive energy gain, then I can actually start to push because everything will be working and I can build more turrets. Okay, this is actually really good. This is better than it could be because now is my only chance to get this shield up here and of course everything's gonna go wrongly um... deactivate you basically what I mean by everything is going wrongly is this needs to keep having power and it's not currently getting power now, if it didn't quite make sense as to why I said this was my only chance, it's because one of those white circles came by and started picking up the creeper, it just started absorbing it. And because it did that, it pushed, it made it so that there was less creeper in the area and gave me a chance to actually push, I should say, without needing to destroy it because the creeper was being removed from the battle. So if this nullifier can successfully do what I need it to do, then all is well. And I'm just going to speed it up again. Hopefully the shield will hold. Hopefully everything goes well because once this gets destroyed then that's when I can start actually doing stuff. And this is really bad. That thing might drop creeper. Oh good. Okay it still dropped the creeper but I destroyed the node which is really what I was looking for. Now I need to watch up here because I notice that What's happening over here is the creeper starting to build up and I don't want it to build up so much that it attacks me. Okay, so even though I destroyed that, this is not quite safe. I still need to clear out a lot of creeper before I can use that node. And once I am able to use that node, everything's going to go much more smoothly for me. So, again, I need more reactors, because I don't have access to any of these, any totems, which will give me upgrades to my power. And I lost a collector down here, which was the one I just placed in this little river, so I'm not too worried about it. So, I'm back to this stage where I'm just waiting for my reactors to finish building, so I can start moving some things, and hopefully getting my network finally in a positive output. Now the mortars clear out creeper much more effectively than the cannons. And because of this, if I take a mortar and put it here, it's going to shoot at the deep sections of creeper. And what's going to happen is they're going to lose a lot more than just a little bit being held off by the pulse lasers. So the creeper is going to in turn flow back into those basically holes of creeper. As you can see, it does a lot more damage. And when it flows back into those holes, it'll basically move out of my way. Because the creeper in its very basic level works like liquid, so if there's a bowl, then it will fill up the bowl before it can go on the outsides. It just conforms to whatever shape of terrain is beneath it. Now, what you're going to see me try and do here is I'm putting a blaster on this circle, this power circle. And what that does is it empowers the unit. And any unit built on it or moved onto these circles get empowered, and they get some kind of bonus, like bonus to range and damage. So it's very good to put your units on them when you can. However, since it's still flooded with creeper, it's taking me a couple of tries to actually clear it out. And as you can see, that cannon is firing ridiculously fast and clearing creeper effectively. So I'm going to be building my first titan, which is going to be the forge, basically the thing that lets me start doing upgrades. And I want the forge because it will let me get way more power production. A large percentage bonus to power production now that I have this Aether node. Now, the forge is something you want to build as early as you can because it gives you all kinds of upgrades. It gives you upgrades to power production, packet travel speed, your weapon's range, and fire rate. It's just the basic upgrade system and you really want to build it as early as you can. And this is as early as I can get it since I just now got an Aether node. 
that will allow me to start getting the upgrade points. Okay, now I think this area, the area I've been focusing on quite dramatically, has finally gotten to a point where I can do what I like to do, or what I did last time for this mission, and it worked highly, effect very effectively, and was just good all over. And that is going to be replacing this guy with the shield once I'm able to manage my power. Okay, so I open up the forge, which I've been saying is the upgrades, and I'm just collecting currently 19, and it's going to be 20 in a second, energy efficiency. Once I grab one upgrade of that, everything that generates energy is going to generate a little bit more. So that means all of these reactors I've been building all now get a little bit more. So now my energy amount that I get to use is significantly higher. So, if I just take this guy and I try to move him without losing too much territory and I tell my shield to move there, hopefully this will go the way I want it to. And I actually need to move that gun so everything stays protected. I'm increasing my energy storage so instead of it being 25 it'll store up to 75 energy and this will be really good. Now I'm going to build my one of the best units in this game and that's called the Bertha. Bertha is very very useful because Bertha is a giant cannon. Okay that did exactly what I wanted it to do. So now, because I have this giant shield, being empowered by this power node means I can actually build nullifiers safely. Very safely, in fact. So I can put all of these collectors here without any risk of them getting destroyed because they're inside of this shield. Of course. Something like that was bound to happen. I say completely safe and then the thing gets disconnected from my power network making it completely unsafe because the shield couldn't maintain. Okay, I'm gonna grab packets, a couple packet speed upgrades so the packets can travel across my network faster and I'm gonna move these turrets so that they can fend off the creeper while this thing remains connected. Two, what did I just lose? Oh, a collector, that's no big deal. I was worried I'm losing nullifiers. Okay, that one's dead. Which means I get another power node, and there's one less emitter creating creeper to cause problems. And with a second emitter down, now it's just gotten to the point where it's kind of grinding for the victory. And I say that because I'm just going to employ this strategy for the rest of the map, because it's the most effective in my mind. You just create these shields on any every power node to get the big shields and then you create nullifiers to destroy the next objective and you just crawl your way to victory. Now because this emitter is gone, the one that's really been causing problems for this area, it's gonna get a lot easier holding back the creeper and of course it's gonna get significantly easier once birth of fires which should be happening pretty soon right there. Boom! Giant crater of just creeper annihilation. Now, of course, this is forces all of the creeper around it to flow back into that bowl, just like I was talking about earlier. So, more build speed. Now, this is an open emitter. And what I'm going to do with that being, or not emitter, sorry, a power source. And what I'm going to do with that being an open power source is put another shield down. Because with another shield, it's going to allow the whole thing to... It's going to let me expand this safe territory, I should say. Meaning that there's more area that I can safely work with. Seeing as how I don't... It's very hard to defend against densities of creeper this dense. And kind of unpredictable since these giant white circles are really just moving creeper around. And just ultimately causing problems. However, once I start destroying more of these blue domes, the white circles will become less and less of a problem, since they'll have less places to travel to, and they will eventually become useless once I've destroyed all of the domes. 
Now, what I'm working on right now is sending my strafers to push this next area. And as you can see, there's hardly any creeper there. And that's mostly because the Bertha cannon is keeping the creeper so low around that emitter that all the creeper from the back line further away from my base is just being poured into that hole shape yet again. So I'm just going to start pushing, trying to control more of the map so I can destroy more objectives and eventually make my way to the very right side of the map where I can claim victory. So as you can see, I have a couple of nullifiers working to take out a couple more domes, and I'm building more berthas because they're highly effective at controlling creeper quantities of this large. So what you noticed when this one exploded was that it emitted a lot of this lighter blue stuff. Now the lighter blue stuff is called anti-creeper, and it's very nice to have. It cancels out creeper, which really helps with creating the shield to push the enemy back. Now I moved my other shield because I don't need it anymore. And what I'm going to do right here is just... Can I put a Bertha? Ooh, I can put a Bertha on the power node. Now a Bertha sitting on a power node is quite the sight to see. And once that charges up, you will understand what I'm talking about. Now I'm just going to tell these Berthas to pick targets that are the emitters for they just basically keep the creeper down not really looking to push with them although you can uh, time your shots with when you're planning to push to help you push if you're stuck currently I'm just gonna use them to keep the creeper out of my way keep it from building up so much that I can't push so there we go there's the empowered Bertha a triple shot. Bertha cannons sitting on top of the power nodes give you a awesome triple shot that just does devastating amounts of damage. So that's anti-creeper, that's the real creeper. I have nullifiers charging up to take the next few objectives so they're gonna be doing work. There we go, there's one. There is two. Now, unfortunately a little bit earlier, like how I mentioned that this level's difficulty is pretty much gone after I took that first area, because once I got that first shield going, then it just got really easy to keep pushing my advantage. So pretty much the rest of this is just grinding to the victory, since there's no real strategic ploy or any real special enemy that's going to try and trick me and make me have to reconsider any strategy. So that's the only unfortunate thing about some levels in Creeper World, is that they there's just this point that you get to that it just feels like you're grinding to the victory and there's no more real challenge. And in place of the shields, I'm going to build Berthas and I'm just going to tell them to auto-target. Now telling them to auto-target will mean they'll just pick the densest place of Creeper when they're ready to fire and they will fire which can be useful so they are not firing on the same spot constantly just destroying hardly any creeper. You're getting maximum efficiency, I should say. So keeping things sped along a lot, you can see that this is just part of the grind. Like I stated earlier, I've pretty much won this, it's just gonna take time to close it out. So I'm speeding it up quite a lot. Now what I'm doing is just employing the same strategy, putting some of the sprayers to create anti-creeper, keeping guns moving forward, and making sure my strafers and berthas are constantly harassing the creeper so that it never actually gets to build up beyond any point that's going to really affect me. And I'm going to throw down my third command node, as you can see right there, because I might as well have the packets that close up front. So. With my last nullifier charging up right there about to destroy the last emitter, it is game over, and I have claimed a victory on this world. Now you can see this game time was 40 minutes, however that is a little bit less since I was speeding through the actual game time with the 4 times in-game acceleration as well as the video acceleration. So anyhow, this brings us to the end of the video. I thank you all for watching. This is PTT GRW, signing out.